through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. I'm Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Lou Taylor Pucci, hey. uh, one of the stars of the new Evil Dead. Uh, I would say the star, if you ask me, but um, Thanks, man. <laughs> this is obviously a momentous task to try and take on a franchise like Evil Dead that is such passionate fans. Um, did you have any sort of consciousness of that, or were you just trying to bring something completely fresh to the Well, I'm table? a huge fan of the original. I'm a huge fan of the original. From when I was 15, when I was doing, you know, the marathon of Evil Dead, then Evil Dead 2, <laughs> then Army of Darkness, over and over again, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Showing my best friend in New Jersey, like, oh, dude, you gotta watch this, you've never seen this before. And then, all of a sudden, becoming a part of this, mm -hmm. this world, that was a dream. That was a dream come true. That was, like, the craziest thing I ever could have expected in my life. Never could have expected. And you kind of had, I mean, I mean, you have a significant role in a lot of different ways. Uh, number one, you sort of set events in motion. Yeah. Uh, you mean, kind of provide a lot of the sort of comedic relief a lot of the time. Um, it's got to be, it was the most fun character that was written. And so I, I that, was so happy well, to that, be that's able why to I'm have fun like with it. Yeah. The star of the movie to me, because, yeah, you, I mean, you have both, you know, the action, the comedy, the right. drama. Like, you really sort of cover the whole spectrum of it. Um, you have sort of a history of being like a chameleon and getting into these characters. What was it like getting into this specific character? Because you really, really took it in. Usually it's a little bit more intense. Like the characters I'm playing are a little more heavy or contemplative or something. You know what I mean? So this was, it was very simple. I just needed to be me. And it was really just trying to be, stay rooted in your body. Uh -huh to make yourself realize what kind of pain you'd be going through or to be able to, to feel shocked or surprised after two months of doing the same thing and putting on that scared face every single day and like well, hoping that it's not the same damn scared face you saw yesterday. That's, I mean, that's a great opinion. And great, I'm not an actor, so I can't really speak to this, but I mean, I've always heard that sort of phrase, you know, um, work with what you know. Yeah. Like, I don't know how you could possibly extrapolate to this. Like, something like this is like, okay, now you're going to get shot with a nail gun. Like, I don't know how you imagine. But audiences know. You know what I mean? Even when you watch a movie, if something's not big enough, like, you, you'd be like, you know, she's, oh, she's, you saw the, oh, you were there, right? Oh, yeah, there, yeah. oh yeah. When oh, she's yeah. squeezing the stuff out oh, of her the, hand. The, like, and the, the audience is like, oh. ah, ah, and that's what she was doing. She's going, ah, ah, you know, it, it just, it makes sense. And it's so, it's very sincere as to how we would really be acting if all this stuff would, would happen to us as normal people. And was that because, you know, it was not a CGI, yeah. crazy heavy film. Like, a lot of it was sort of like, you would feel the prosthetics, you would see the stuff Absolutely. that helped you sort of capture Having that. Having that mindset. texture was, made, was what made people squeal and made people really, you know, disgusted. I don't think you can do it with CGI. Anybody who's making horror films with CGI, just stop making them. Stop it. It doesn't work. It's not scary. That's all. That's the problem. And I really wanted to say that to Fede before we made this, but I didn't even have to because he was on the same page already. It was so cool. And in this, I mean, this has got to be one of the most intense horror films I've seen in a long time. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the gore, the blood, like you, you guys pretty much are unrelenting the entire time through. What is it like? I mean, it sounds like you're a horror fan with your Evil Dead history and stuff like that. What is it like as a horror fan to be part of a production like that that's actually sort of, you know, hitting those horror notes that you know you love yourself. It was, um, honestly, I, <laughs> it's so funny. I always kind of, I'll, I'll be doing regular, whatever I've taken on in my life. Like, uh, I was with a girl who would only watch horror films for the last three years. So I've watched every <laughs> horror film ever. And then I got this movie. So I've seen everything just now. Like I had been doing a research paper on it for three years. Wow, that's And funny. then got to make this movie. So I just knew what I wanted to see and I knew what I wanted to not do wrong. Did you, I mean, as a fan of the original Evil Dead, did you have any sort of reservations about it going into it? I mean, obviously, oh, as an actor, yes. it's a challenge, you know. And me, like, when I hear Evil Dead, it's like, I'm not necessarily opposed to horror remakes, yeah. but sort of like, Evil Dead is such a unique and special character with it's Ash. perfect. Yeah. The original one is a perfect classic. 
And when I found out that they were remaking this, I was like, absolutely not. I am not being a part of that. I don't even want to audition. No, thank you. And they were like, you know, you should go in. Just go in, go in. And I said, no, no. Um, and the characters were written old, so I used that mm. excuse. I was like, I'm, look, I don't look 35, okay? I just don't look 35. Even with a beard, I don't look 35. So then they started looking at younger guys, and I said, okay, I'll, I'll go in. And it was the worst audition ever. It was really? terrible because, you know, you're, it was an audition where it's all action. You know what I mean? Mm. They had to see if you could be crazy and stuff. <laughs> and so we did the scene where, you know, he's, he's on top of the trap door and she's trying oh, yeah, to get out yeah. uh-huh. and he's yelling words like he's going I don't think this is a freaking panic attack here you know what I mean yeah. and that was the audition you're like on the ground like try it so you know it was terrible I walked out of it and I was like I suck this is the worst thing ever I should have never came <laughs> and then I got a call back and I couldn't believe it and they told me Bruce Campbell will be there. So I was like, I am going to go meet Bruce Campbell. This is the coolest thing ever. So I went there literally just to meet Bruce Campbell. And I had no idea that I could even possibly get the part because I didn't figure that they would go that young with the characters. I was wrong. So, I mean... Bruce Campbell notwithstanding, like, I can totally appreciate that. At what point were you like, okay, like, I feel like this is legit? Was it when you read the script, when you talked to the director, when you talked to Bruce Campbell? Like, who was it that sold you, like, It was when I this? talked to them all. Uh, when I went to that second audition, I did, I kind of, I, I kind of, I don't, wouldn't say I grilled them, but I asked them everything I could. I was like, so what kind of campiness? Is this campy at all? What mm-hmm. are we doing here? Is this a serious movie? Do you want me to be serious? Sure. And they said, yes, this is a totally new thing, you know? And even, you know, Bruce Campbell, obviously, is making fun of himself. He was like, we couldn't act our way out of paper bags in 19, you know, in <laughs> 81 when this thing was made. And, uh, you know, so we want to do something different. Like, uh, if we had the money then to make mm-hmm. a serious horror film. And uh, I was on board immediately because it seemed like they were really serious about it, and I couldn't believe it. What was it like being probably the one who takes the most punishment in the course of the movie? Like, it seems like that would be both fun and kind of exhausting as an actor, because I can't imagine, like, doing time after time of, like, getting hit with something or shot with something or stabbed with something. Every single day, though, I was really counting my blessings that it was all practical, that we were using prosthetics. And even though it took hours to get into and out of and scrub off, it was just so necessary so that we can make something really good and something that would end up people would want to watch it again. I don't know. So I, I feel like taking the, the brunt of the punishment was great. <laughs> I got to be one of the most fun parts oh, to watch, yeah. I feel I, like. I, d- I definitely think so. Like, in terms of building that chemistry, what was it like trying to get the chemistry between all of you? Because that, I think that's a very important element. Like, yeah. if you guys all didn't feel like friends, it could have felt very off. It wasn't my first, you know, movie. So I was uh, used to having no time with people and having to figure out some kind of chemistry and everything. And in weird ways, it doesn't seem like I would be the most senior one on, on a set or something, but I kind of was. Like, Fede hadn't done mm-hmm. a lot of features. Um, the other cast were all uh, like a li- at least a little bit younger than me, and I sp- like especially Jane, she just came out of like school and was just got suburgatory uh-huh. and so young in her career and everything. And so I had done you know, a lot of indie films, so I knew yeah. what I was getting into. And so I figured we need to do something. And Easter vacation was like right before we shot, so. I called every single beach house that there was, and I found one that um, somebody had died, of course. Like, terrible thing happened. And, they, and so their beach house was co- totally free, and we paid almost nothing to go to this beautiful Coromandel Beach in New Zealand where we were filming, but, like, hours away. So I, I bought a car, learned how to drive on the left side of the road, and right. took the entire cast on this road trip to a beach house where we promptly got shit-faced. That's pretty awesome. And it was awesome. It was so good. And we all really got to know each other right then. And so not discussing the future of Evil Dead, so spoilers can be left out of this. Yeah. Do you have any desire to do another horror film? Uh, it just seems like it would be I hard to top. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, there's how could you top it, number one? That yeah. is the truth. It's just not able to be. If I was going to do something, it would probably just be, if it was horror, it would not be gory, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but at the same time, I don't know. It, life throws you curveballs, and I it definitely am not going to say no to anything. All right. So the film comes out April fifth. Uh, yeah. Where can people find out more information about you I to don't keep know. track? Do you have like a Facebook, <laughs> Twitter, or anything? No, people you can. can you can go on my Facebook. Um, the best way to get hold of me, though, is uh, I don't know. I guess it is Facebook. I'm not going to give you my cell phone number on here. <laughs> Your cell phone number will be put down at the bottom of it. It's just stuff like No, um, I, did, there, I do have like a LouTaylorPucci.com, but I don't really update it enough. I think my brother's going to try to do that. 
Very cool. Just uh, so you know. <laughs> congratulations, with the mo- congratulations with the movie, and I look forward to seeing what you do next. Cool. And uh, more interviews at MacGuffinPodcast.com. Thank you.